welcome, welcome back. I hope you didn't stay at the Code Hackathon too late last night. Uh, I know we had people there till fairly late in the evening. Uh, what we want to do today is very similar to the format we followed yesterday. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Josh Block. We have uh, an opportunity today to talk to another uh, distinguished member of the Java community. Uh, G. Call is, I mean, if I look at his business card here, I can tell you exactly what his title is, is uh, Vice, President, Vice President Developer Products and Programs. Now before you panic, even though his title is Vice President, Jeet is not a pointy-haired boss. Uh, he has a lot of, you know, he came to the Java community in 1996 after, after uh, being at Apple doing true type development and joined the original Java development team to work on, oh. If you have one of these, turn it off. Uh, as I was saying, he joined the job development team to work on the 2D API yes. and over the years has been very much involved in the evolution of the Java platform and we're going to talk today a little bit about what the tools and products group that he manages does and what that all has to do with GWT and building the kind of apps that you guys build. Before we do that though, Barbara I'm going to try something. I, this is probably not a good idea, unrehearsed, but could you pop up, oh, my Facebook page. I very recently joined Facebook, and one of my first friends is Duke. Oh. That's Duke again. That's very amateurish. You know, I feel like Rudy Giuliani. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Duke sent me a couple of photos of what he's been up to lately. Let me see that, that first one. Actually, that's Duke. Can you enlarge that, Barbara? That's, uh, that's Duke as we knew him uh, in 1996. The, the next uh, photo is Duke lately. Click on the next button. Duke, Duke as you might be able to see here, has, has changed a bit. He's, he's become more radical, more extreme. He, he's, gone, he's gone mobile. He's, he's using a lot of different devices. It's, it's not just Java on the desktop anymore. And let me see the next one. And, and here's Duke on vacation. Uh, Duke's been getting very heavily involved in, in the, the whole area of rich client development, rich internet applications, and I believe, I think it's gone to his head a bit, but uh, and then he sent me a photo of one of his buddies, the next one. Uh, uh, that's actually uh, James, I believe that's from Second Life. Uh, James no, is no, now it's, more it's, popular in Second Life than Britney. It's, it's actually James as a South Park cartoon. Anyway, enough of this nonsense, you can shut that off, Barbara. Gee, Tell us a little bit about your experience over the last uh, 12 years with Java, going from Java as we knew it in 1996 to the much more complex ecosystem that is the Java platform today. So, so you know, so big, big, big Java fan. Um, you know, uh, started using it in 1995 and thought that wouldn't it be fun to actually work in the company that has a lot to do with Java. And so 996 uh, stumbled into to Sun working on Java 2D. And uh, it was an amazing experience. It was uh, like many of you who are in startups get. It was just like that. And we were doing tons of code, very cocky. We were very cocky people then. We thought we would solve world hunger at that time. And uh, that stayed for a, for a, for a little while. Um, the only interesting aspect of that is uh, I remember uh, we had some kind of a, a sit-down discussion of here's where the future is, and um, I'm not going to name names. Somebody came in and said we are thinking about going on the server side, and we have you know thinking about doing technology called enterprise Java Bean, and we desktop people just laughed our asses off, thinking ah this is never going to work. Desktop rules. And uh, well, you know, a significant large majority of what Java is doing right now is on the server side. And the funny thing is, 
you know, as we are, as, as this has happened, as there's a large enterprise market, uh, we at Sun have realized, ah, you know, we probably didn't pay enough attention to the desktop woes. And I think a lot of the work we're doing now is to coming back, uh, correcting a few mistakes that were made in 1995, 1996. So it's, it's, it's been fantastic, fantastic ride. So. What, what did happen to all the desktop people? You know, so we, well, some of them went and joined Google. So. I think there are a few of those people here. Yes, I'm sure there are. Uh, and uh, there, we still have some of the early desktop people, you know, James is around. So they are around and they are very excited about what's going to happen coming forward. Uh, the new things we are trying to do, a lot, lot of cool stuff, you know. Now, your day job, though, is working in, with an organization that is responsible for developer tools and support. Could you tell me a little bit about the teams that you're responsible for and some of the products? And yeah. kind of, we want to tie, tie that into what these guys are interested in. We got a room full of developers here who are interested in tools. Okay. So, um, you know, give you a quick kind of glimpse of, of where we are. So, I'm primarily at Sun responsible for uh, developer tools. At least that's my job right now. I'm sure there will be a reorg happening soon. I'll find that out when I get back. So, uh, but. Uh, probably what that call was. <laughs> exactly. That's probably what it was like, you know, send Jeet back. Uh, um, most of the time we spend on is trying to figure out uh, what are the new uh, technologies that developers are playing with, trying to make sure that there is support for that in the tools that we are working on. We do a whole lot of tools, a uh, um, lot of you know, performance analysis, a lot of uh, debugging tools, C, C++ stuff, uh, uh, the, but the big part of my organization, but the big part of the thing that we do that you probably are familiar with is NetBeans. Um, we spend a good amount of time uh, trying to make sure that NetBeans is as easy and as good and as great an IDE as it can be. So, um, is there anything new with NetBeans? Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, it's just uh, it is. Uh, uh, it was a touch and go. This this uh, week we released NetBeans six, and the thing that you, so you know I used to know, use NetBeans a long time ago and. Uh, made a decision and never to use it ever again. Uh, those in the 3.6 days, it you, was... You're aware that this is being tape recorded. That's going to be on YouTube. Uh, uh, I, I have gotten in trouble many times. So I'm going to be careful here now with my words. Thank you, Greg. Um, um, so, you know, over the years, it started doing better, better, did more things. Everything was great. The thing that was left after 5.5 that was just completely bugging me were the editor features. Uh, it was lagging behind, and you know, what do you use IDE for? And if you can't make uh, uh, your productivity, develop productivity go fast, and I think that's the biggest thing that Six is bringing to the plate. Um, a lot of improvements there, a lot of improvements in refactoring and all those things. So, and, and flexibility of changing and turning on and off these features and that being so very excited about that. Plus there's uh, support for Okay, I, I know some of you may not like it. There's support for Ruby there, a lot of good support for that. So, um, it's very excited about that launch right now. So. Well, we, we've been on stage for 10 minutes, and you can't talk to developers for much longer than that without actually showing some code. So, could we act, take a peek at some of the things that you guys have been doing? Absolutely. So, you know, so I'll just uh, introduce uh, Greg Murray here. He is our, um, you know, senior architect uh, for Ajax at Sun. What, what we're going to try to show you is, uh, so I love GWT. I think for those of you who have used Java and used Swing and want to do Ajax, there is no better answer than GWT. It's been a while we have had support for GWT in um, NetBeans. What you're going to see is a very quick way of building that inside NetBeans. Greg? Well, we need to switch the screen. Switching screen. Screen? I thought my hand, is it going to work? No? You're going to have the screen puppet to doesn't work. What happened to Barbara? Uh, we, we can do hand, hand puppets. Thing. Oh, screen? Screen? Hello? 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 Hello?
That's Bingo. Uh, uh, I, I use the Mac. There are a lot of Linux on. Um, it's great for GWT or Quiz. Uh, uh, development. What I've got here is NetBeans 6, uh, the release from yesterday. And what I'll show first is how to create a very simple uh, GWT project using the plugin GWT for NetBeans. So it's very easy, very fast. This is a web project, so you're, you're deploying, in this case, to Glassfish. This is a production uh, J2E server that is the reference implementation for Java EE5. So you can also deploy it to Tomcat as well. Um, that selection can be made um, from this screen if you want to add it. Very easy to do. We have a lot of different choices. So when I create a project, the first thing I need to do is add GWT support. When I do this with this project, it's not going to create any JSP pages or anything. It's going to give you just the elements that you would get from a Hello World style application in GWT. Everything out of the box is set for you. And I don't know why it always opens all these screens. Uh, I don't even uh, modify the HTML. What I'll just do is I'll deploy what they give me. I've got my main entry point right here. And what it has in it is it's got a button and a label. And the button will make the label appear and disappear. Very, very similar to the, the samples you'll get with GWT itself. When I deploy this, it'll deploy it um, onto the application server. And I do have the ability to add servlets and other things very easily. And as you notice here, it's very simple. Uh, you click me. Uh, does what you expect. If you change it, um, right now in this mode, I would need to do a redeploy, though I can also use the GWT tools as well that do the continuous compile. All right, so do you want to see something more advanced? I, I, would, I would like that, absolutely. So um, many of you that may or may not know who I am, I've worked in the Ajax community for a, a few years now. Uh, most of my focus has been on JavaScript-centric uh, design for Ajax. And now in integrating that with GWT I thought would be difficult. Uh, the models were very similar, and I, I actually found it was quite easy. So I'm going to show you some of the work that I've done with Project Jmaki, which is a really a JavaScript-centric solution where I'm providing a very good, uh, or we are providing a very good component model for JavaScript, and I'm going to combine the two. So I thought, going into the GWT world, I looked around and saw what um, might be most interesting, and I thought charting might be a good place to start. We have a lot of uh, charting support with Jmaki. Uh, we use the plot kit and also the Dojo charting APIs from a JavaScript perspective. So what I'm going to do is show you how we've exposed those to GWT. And I don't think I can ever say GWT. Uh, people have been saying that around here. It's um, <laughs> Ajax community, we always say GWT. By show of hands, do, who likes GWT versus GWT better? Or maybe, is this a question? Okay. GWT, GWT? OK. <laughs> Sounds like GWT is a little stronger there, but um, I, I, maybe this will become a religious battle, and maybe I don't want to be at the center of this. So. OK. Anyway, all right. So what I've done with our uh, charting APIs, there, are, there is some JavaScript involved, but you as a Java developer are not going to have to touch those to do the basic things. So what I'm going to do, I've got a jar file, and I'll make this available later today. This is part of uh, the Project Jmaki Widgets project. I've got a jar file that you build, and all you need to do is add it as a library to your application. So I've already pre-configured this library so it knows where the path is. But you can just add it as a jar file, and it's called, I call it Jmaki GWT Charting. Simple name. What that's done is in my class path, it's added a jar file for me. And the jar file has all the resources you need to do charting. So once I've added it to my class path, the next thing I can do is start doing charts. So I've got to do my import up here. Jmaki charting. So check out the code, code completion thing. Yes, code completion. And, and, and it also does Java docs, if there are Java docs available. You can turn the, that on and off. So I've got a few different charts here. And as you notice, I'm, I'm still working on my Java docs. Um, but they do appear as, um, as me as a coder. Um, I was just very happy to be able to, um, to get charting done. But uh, there will be documentation as well. So I'm going to add a pie chart to my page. And when we, when we do a pie chart, this is really the, the rendering of this is going to be relegated uh, to JavaScript in this case. So I'll define it in Java. It'll write out the right things to the page, and it'll use some VML or, um, in the case of what I'm going to show you, SVG to do the rendering. OK, so I've got a pie chart. And all I need to do with my pie chart is put it in the page. I'm going to use this from an inner class. So, so now I can call it a pie chart. 
I'll call it PC equals new pie chart. Now with JMaki, there are two ways of defining things. You can define them either as embedded or inline values, or you can define them in, as a separate service. In this case, I'm going to show the easier case as a separate service. So this is going to be a URL to where I've actually defined um, what I want the chart to look like. And this is in JSON format. You're not, you do not have to do this as a Java developer. You can actually define it in Java, but because I'm on stage and sometimes things go horribly bad, I would rather uh, do this. All right. So I've got a chart.json. This could be a JSP. It could be a servlet. I'm just going to have it as a static file. And at this point, we've also added the ability to give it some default sizes. If you don't provide a size, it will fit itself to whatever thing, whatever layout component you put it in. So I save my chart. I have to do two more things. One, I have to add it to the panel. And it doesn't really, well, let's put it after. So I've got my pie chart. And the last thing I need to do is have the actual chart. And this is how we have the format. In JMaki, we've got a, a set of wiki pages that, de that define this format. We've tried to do is in JSON format. This is JavaScript object notation. Uh, we decided um, to uh, basically have a very standard set for all the charts. So if you're using Dojo charts, Yahoo, or not Yahoo, uh, or Plotkit charts, um, it's the same format. And we have very similar formats for data tables, trees, uh, pretty much any widget you can think of. Um, it, from the JMaki perspective, it is a JavaScript first, and we've started with this. So you can use both in GWT. So I've got my page. Let's go back and let's add one file here that will actually contain that data. So I'm going to say I want to have a new JSON file. I'm going to call it chart, and I'll paste that in. So now, cross your fingers. When I deploy this thing, I will hopefully get a chart here. If I don't forget to do one thing, does anyone know what I forgot to do? You can't inherit code without having an inherit statement. So the compile went fine, but I need to put this so right here. We need to define that we are inheriting the JMaki charting widgets. Charting widgets. Now, hopefully, all things will go good. I like to do those things just to make sure everyone knows that this is a real demo. Yes. Oh, but what did I do wrong? Crap. I hate it when this happens. So it did not find my chart.json. Imagine that. That's pretty nasty. If any of you have ever used Firebug um, or haven't, um, I would strongly recommend it. Let's make sure we're in the right web application. And we, where did I put my chart.json? While he was looking and thinking about chart.json, so let me kind of put some things in context of what he was showing you. So uh, what, how many of you have ever heard about what JMaki is? Show of hands, or if you're okay, few, as I would expect. So um, if you're trying to do um, any kind of uh, um, web application framework, so G GWT is the model. If you're a Java developer, don't want to muck around with JavaScript. I think at Sun, we are in the model of thinking, ah, here it is. What did you do wrong? Um, when I created, I don't know where I put the chart.json file, but when I created it, it wasn't there. Um, you got to love Firebug, because I was able to figure that out pretty quickly. Okay. But um, sometimes these things do happen. Okay. Excellent Thank recovery. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was good. So uh, I, I think that you know, so if, if, um, if, if you're trying to uh, get into JavaScript, or you want to do JavaScript development, you're a Java developer, I think the best choice is GWT. There's also JSF. If you want an e-developer, you want to be able to do client-server side uh, model for UI and uh, robust and have a lot of vendors supported, that's the way to do it. I think uh, we believe that the trend will be more and more uh, the fact that you will want to, as you start getting used to a certain look and feel, you'll want to make a lot of changes and get closer and closer to JavaScript. And JMaki is that model for us. It's a little closer. It's a, client, a very thin client-server model based on JavaScript. And it allows you to make wrappers. So no matter what kind of a framework you're using, whether you're using, you know, it was very easy for us to incorporate it as part of the GWT thing. So if there's widgets from Dojo, from all kinds of vendors, it's possible to very quickly use them and utilize them in your Java application. What, what seems clear to me, Gene, is that I mean, this ecosystem is very complicated in a lot of ways. It's 
got swing people, you've got JavaScript people, you've got, as you, as you alluded to, you've got uh, <coughs> server-side people. Uh, what about the developers who've been working with uh, JSF, uh, or even the people who are still doing servlets and, and JSP? You know, what, what do you think the best path to doing ajaxy like stuff is for those kind of people? Yeah. It, you know, so reiterating that, you know, if you are a Java developer who's been doing Swing for a long time, I think GWT is your way. Now, at some point of time, if you're trying to build very uh, interesting, very complex apps, you get familiar with JavaScript, you have to get your hands dirty. It, it's the direction, it's the way. It's the direction, it's the way to do it. And what we're trying to do is, we, there's a lot of investment that we, ha we have made, and a lot of vendors have made with JSF, so there is an ecosystem around it. Uh, if you want to do a Java E stuff with Seam coming in, maybe becoming part of Java E6, um, you know, but that's, if you're familiar with that, you're familiar with Java E, familiar with JSF, that's probably the best way to do it. it there's an ecosystem around it. If you're new, go with GWT. But ultimately, all, all things, this is personal belief, and I think that's what we believe generally at Sun, you will want to get more and more closer to JavaScript as possible. Uh, if you want to make you know, interesting, dynamic things appear on the, in the browser, uh, and, and Jmaki is one step towards that. You want me to show you uh, a little bit more about what you mean? We can change that chart without having to do a full page refresh. Sure. Sure. I can do it in 30 seconds. Maybe. I want a timer. Someone That's get great. their timer. All right. Luckily, I have pre typed in all the code that I need, so not as bad as you think. So, what I've done is now in Java, I'm going to manipulate that table we've got here. I've got a data set API, and what I can do is I can actually change completely the information in the chart. All right, if I can just find my browser. Okay. So when I click on that button, instead of making that label go visible and invisible, I'm going to add another data set, or actually set the data set of the chart to something different. As you notice here, the, the IDE is telling me I've forgotten to do something. I've got a data set API that's part of the charting package, and this is just a way of defining an, an ID, uh, a label, and a set of points. All right, charting, client, and... Yeah, I can't type. Okay. Data set. After that, all I need to do is push this out. If I can spell data, oh, I have a pie chart. And if I would have been paying attention to my IDE, which is screaming at me, I would be fine. He's getting used to NetBeans 6 here. Well, I'm getting used to, um, I, I've, I've spent so long um, out of Java development. Um, I, I work on the runtime side of Jmaki, but uh, to be honest, it doesn't change as much. The JavaScript is where a lot of the action happens. So to show you, you can say click me here, and <laughs> I've changed that without having to re-render. That's all happening on the client. So the page didn't have to get re-rendered. Like I said, we, we're just starting with, with, uh, with GWT, and uh, this is just a few weeks' work, and uh, there will be a lot more coming. What's interesting, Jeet, uh, when GWT was uh, announced at uh, Java 1 in May of 2006, Six. there were you know, other folks like, like Greg Murray you know, taking alternate paths to address the, the challenges of Ajax. But, but what if I'm not really a JavaScript guy, I'm not really a, even a Java guy? What if I like Ruby, for example? What do I do? Ah, ah, very good. So. Um, so, you know, what was the thought process? So, um, what we're trying to kind of do at Sun, and again, used to be a model where you came to Sun and we were very single track thought process. You asked us any question, we always gave you the same answer. Uh, I think we have kind of looked at and said, okay, there's a lot of stuff happening out in the community, a lot of innovation happening, how to incorporate that and make things work in the current format. So. What we have been doing, we have been spending some time on is uh, uh, JRuby. Uh, we have several people at Sun who are committers to JRuby. Uh, JRuby, not just Ruby. Uh, get all the interesting features uh, that you get with the dynamic language and still be able to leverage standard Ruby stuff and Rails stuff and the Java uh, APIs behind that. And 
So when you're building a Ruby app, guess what? If you're building a Ruby app or you're building a PHP app, you still need to play with models and things which allow you to go and do your JavaScript stuff on the screen, on the browser. So if you're trying to make components work in one place and you want to use them somewhere else, you will have to redo things right now. So we wanted to kind of make sure that whatever people have built, so you know, if you're building things like the Dojo Toolkit, uh, if, if, if you're building components that are JavaScript components, uh, be able to use them in, from one uh, framework to another framework, whether it's facelets or JSPs or JSF, or for that matter, either using Ruby or PHP, being able to use that with the current you know, JMaki model. So would it, can we show some stuff right now on that one? Would it be sure, okay? We have plenty of time. So I've got, uh, I can build this from scratch, or I can use pre-configured. Uh, let's, let's do pre-configured. So. Pre-configured, all right. So we're not going to take another risk after our little uh, JSON debacle. Uh, you want to see Rails first? That would be nice. OK, so with Rails, you have um, inside of NetBeans 6, you've got uh, WebBrick. Actually, the, the Java version is there by default. So when you create an application, if you notice, I've already got it running here. All I need to do is set this as my main project. I've already created it. As you notice, there are a lot of, of different items here. And these are the different things in the Rails world that you'll deal with. So you've got controllers. If you've used struts, uh, this is a very similar model. You've got views. Uh, in this case, these are um, RHTML. So if you've ever used JHTML or even uh, JSP, it looks very similar. This is a JMaki page in this case where we've taken one of our templates. So the model is a little bit can different. You, can you talk about the palette that you have? Quickly? Oh, yes. So the palette you'll see on the right-hand side is of all the JMaki widgets. And when we work in a script-centric, meaning a JSP, a PHP, or a Ruby world, the drag-and-drop behavior is exactly the same. And depending on what editor you're in, you're going to get a different style of drop in the page. And as you notice, this is the same style of data that we had. In this case, it's Ruby-centric, but it's the same data for the chart. So out of the box, you're going to get the same thing. You see it right there in line. Normally, what you're going to do is you're going to put this in a separate service and you're going to have that accessed using an AJAX request. But we like to put things where people can see it. So to get this to deploy, I just need to, to hit the deploy button. It's the same experience that we saw with GWT, and it's also the same experience in PHP, and actually, uh, which we, we support quite a few now. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And normally, it, and it is, he's learning again. <laughs> I'm not learning. It's, for some reason, it upped the port number, but that's fine because I already have it deployed here. I know where things go now. Yes. <laughs> so. But it is interesting as a developer because on any given day, I'll find myself working in, in three or four different programming languages. And Java, of course, is always the first. But I think as developers, it's something we all need to realize that there's a lot of things to learn. So in this case, the, the main difference between the communication between these two widgets, we saw it in Java before. We had a listener. We added it. We clicked on the button, and it changed. That was all done in Java code. What JMaki can also provide is on the client, without going back to the server, we have a communication bus. So I can actually register for this click event. This is a Yahoo button in this case. And it'll publish a message. We've got a publish subscribe bus. It's an event bus. And it can actually be picked up by the chart. All this behavior is built in. And the code to do that is provided in JavaScript, and it looks like this. So if you remember, I had a data set in Java. That was the Java representation. In this case, I use an object literal in JavaScript. And this is just I'm inline defining the data. And you've got the data set right there. And notice I'm publishing a, a message to update the chart. This is something you get for free. This is something that's provided. You can work with it in all the different languages including GWT if you don't want to use the Java model. So you could actually have interaction between different widgets in the page without having to go back for a server round trip if you chose to. So can so, you go back to the palette? Yes. So, so I just you know, want to make a, a request and maybe a call to action for some of you who are interested. Uh, I think one of the things that people want to do is have a whole lot of interesting components. And uh, very hard to find them. And you know, there's a lot of people who are here who are building a whole lot of components. Just want to get some help so we can put GWT wrappers around the ones that we have. We are trying very, very hard to make more and more of these accessible for GWT, but we are not going to be able to do it as fast as we, if we get some help. So 
If any of you are interested and think, see some of these widgets that you might like, some of these uh, components, come in and help us and make them uh, within the GWT framework. So not a lot of work. He, you were able to do a few of them. How quickly? So once I had the base classes, it's just a few minutes. It's deciding what in JavaScript you really want to expose in Java. Yes. In the case of charting, there's, there's a lot of things you can expose, the access information, the data sets, and a few other things. Because at the end of the day, I'm sure that most of you, I guess maybe this is a good time to ask, how many of you know JavaScript or, I guess I'll, I'll start with that. Okay, so actually there's a, a, more than what I expected. How many of you like JavaScript? Maybe that's a, okay. Okay. Well, I, for you that, that kind of like the synergy between GWT and JavaScript, I think this is a great s solution. Yes. So. Um, I would have to reiterate what Jeet said. You know, you don't have to, you know, contributing would be nice, but even if you just provide feedback on which components you'd like to see. I mean, we have about 50, 55 uh, components on the palette from the best of the toolkits out there. Um, it's not hard to increase this number. Uh, it, it's just a, it, it's time and interest. Jeet, if we can kind of circle back to your mission as, as, as a being the individual son responsible for the developer tools. Uh, how do you engage developers with new things? Developers always like shiny new things. How, how, what, how do you actually you know, manage that process? Uh, so, you know, um, so we, we try to do a whole lot of things. I mean, this, this is, a, a, is, is a great example. One of the things that we used to do a lot of in the beginning used to be come and say, here is what we are doing at Sun, and let's bark those things at you. Um, what we're trying to do a whole lot of is trying to figure out where are the various trends that are happening out in the market, where are the things where activity is happening, and we are joining those places. I mean, we are trying to be part of that, be part of that uh, model, be part of that community, and trying to bring all of that. And uh, the investment in NetBeans is important to us because we are able to then figure out those places and make as much changes, as much support as possible out of the box. We are in the business of trying to make sure developers get done things easier, simpler, faster. I think that would be a good segue to maybe opening up the floor to some questions. Stephanie, do you have the, the handheld? Uh, we did have a couple of questions yesterday that came up during the course of the conference, and I said, gee, we have a, a guy from Sun, you can ask him directly. So does anybody have any, anything they want to address about the Java platform, about uh, you know, this, this whole area of uh, rich internet applications? So, so as some of you are thinking of questions or not at all, uh, can I get a show of hands? How many of you went to Java One, the last Java One? And I would presume that you figure out what's happening in Java, going to places, the community, and the websites. So, I, I think one of the things that, that struck me yesterday is this, this is very much a group that's that's you know, bought into the component model, that you know, the way to, to build applications is you grab a little bit of, this, little bit of that and you, and, you, and you mash it all together. Uh, what do you see in, in your travels, and what's kind of down the road for Sun? I know there may be things you can't quite talk about explicitly today, but do you agree that that's the direction uh, this community is heading? Uh, sure, I mean, I think that, so there, there are a couple of things that are gonna happen, so you know, we are trying to, just like all of you and many of you are trying to do, we are trying to do several things at the same time. Um, one of the things that you see, you know, there is an investment, for example, in uh, JSF uh, as part of being, uh, you know, vendor Java E vendor and it's part of the standard. But we are also making investment in GWT because we think if you are a Java developer, if you want to do Ajax stuff, that is the quickest, fastest way to do it. And we want to support that. But we also realize that the trend is towards building uh, components uh, using, you know, Dojo Toolkit, making sure it's easily wrappable in a model with JMaki, so you can use it not just in with one framework, but any other Java framework or any other framework that is non-Java too. But I think the trend that is going to happen long term is going to be the place where there will be a whole lot of services available. We are doing all kinds of interesting uh, experiments, and you want to be able to compose many of these things online you're, while you're looking at services. You want to say, I like that, like that, want this to interact, and you want to be in the browser and do all of that stuff. So that direction is coming. It's going to be coming your way too. And while people think that wonderful, shiny stuff is going to happen to somebody else, I can 
promise you that a lot of enterprises, banks and things in Wall Street are looking at that, that that's what they may need to do to provide support for their customers. Was part of the problem though that web services are hard to do? Uh, you know, so, well, so I'm a tool guy. I will never claim it's hard to do because the tool does everything. So, uh, you know, I think that there, there is a trend towards uh, restful web services. I think that uh, people who build these services are going to do so, have to do a lot of work to make things easier and easier for the developers. We are doing that. At the end of the day, what would we'd see that there will be a you know huge marketplace of services available. Uh, some of those that are very popular, things from Google, uh, if I'm allowed to say things from Amazon, you will see a whole lot of that happening. And for pe developers to be able to use them on the fly and put things together, so. Um, most of that looks like will be restful stuff. So, well, what, what has to happen, for example, with uh, the next generation of the enterprise platform to make this easier? What, what's what's on the horizon for Java EE six? Yes. So you know, so I, I just had to tell you. So I used to be in the Java EE world, um, a, a, a reorg before, and uh, it's for several years we've been trying to go and sit down and think about it, saying you know. EE platform needs to be made simpler and easier and extensible and, uh, and accessible to, to people. Uh, wh what has been happening over the years is that while the Java EE pieces, the server-side technology is popular, a lot of people use it, whether you use just serverless or JSPs or something else, it's, it's, it's popular, but the number of people who are building servers that our Java e servers is becoming smaller and smaller. You know, we just kept piling on stuff and made it harder. So, um, while we did with Java e five a model, the community went in and built something with the annotations uh, and the Java persistence API things. You know, it used to drive me nuts that you would do an e development and you had to do a whole bunch of deployment descriptor stuff in order to go ahead and define models. It's like, why can't I say I have a Java class and I say, okay, you know, getters and setters and it goes and saves, you know, simple pojo stuff. So uh, those were some of the steps we took, but that's not enough. And I think we need to make it possible for multiple server vendors to come in. And we need to make it possible for all of the great work that is happening in the uh, community, open source community with different frameworks to plug in. So Java E6, not yet public, approved, but a proposal has been out, and the key things it's trying to address are those things. How can we allow things like Spring? So you know, take a look at Rod Johnson's blog. How to make sure that Spring plugs into your EE setup. Um, that's, that's very important. How to have all of these things come in. Uh, Hibernate became part of the Java, you know, Hibernate toppling became part of the Java persistence story, but uh, we wanted to be, provide more flexibility. The second part we're saying is like shrink. I only want serverless JSP web technology, so profiles. I just want small stuff. So we're trying to make it possible for people to build servers quicker and faster. And that was the reason for doing uh, Glassfish, open sourcing uh, the, the platform. It was because we don't want people to redo the code. Take the stuff, build something with it. Just do it. Uh, and the new version of Glassfish v3, it's 100K in size. 100K inside startup time, you know, very small. What's the startup time, Ludo? Uh, build up five seconds. Yes. <coughs> very, very quickly. I don't know if everybody heard that. Uh, oh, so, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds. Startup happens, and, you know, if you don't use uh, a web container, it doesn't load. It doesn't come up. So those are the things. We're making a lot of changes to make it easier for people to build applications and at the same time allow more people to be part of the story so you have more options. I, I think you know, the message I'm hearing is that what you really try to do is, is respond to the developer's pain points. And um, I'm just curious if there's anybody in the room here who has something that they find particularly painful they want to throw out and, and see, what, see what the chief response is. I'm taking notes. I, uh, I don't know if, oh, we have somebody right here. Here comes the microphone. Thank you. Um, this is kind of a minor pain point, if you will, but in, within my company and within my community, I constantly hear, oh, Java is such a performance peg. And even though with Java 5 and Java 6, 
performance has gotten much better. I'm curious, two questions, I guess. One, what can we look forward to, if any synergies between GWT and the future um, things coming out of Sun with either Glassfish or the JDK to address performance, number one. And number two, what are you doing to get the word out more about some of the performance enhancements with Java, especially in the areas where some, in some cases it's even faster than C++, but it seems like it's a big secret within the Java community. Outside of that, it, nobody knows. Yeah. You know, so uh, I, I'll try my best, best to answer because I'm going to probably wander off left and right on this one. Um, you know, the, the, the impression about Java speed is stuck in people's head from the early days. You know, uh, AWT stuff and early swing stuff, you know, I, I, we are recording, crawled, you know. Uh, and and I, had a, I had a lot to do with it, so I just want to accept that. That's why they made me a VP, so I wouldn't write any more code. <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, it's a very different ballgame. There are many, many instances, especially on the server, client-server model, where we are way, way, way faster than you can get. We perform better than native C code. So this, this whole thought process that Java is slow is, is a myth, is an urban legend now. Even on the UI side, you know, there are cases where the responsiveness is not fast, but if you look at the new work with JDK 6, uh, stuff that has happened in OpenJDK, responsiveness is great. We can do all kinds of, you know, there's gaming happening. There are thousands of apps that people do, that companies do for the mobile devices on Java. Every week, I'm not going to name companies here, but there's a company that does several, three, 4,000 apps, games, games, on Java for the mobile apps. So responsiveness is good. Now, are there places where things are tricky? Does garbage collection make you think that maybe, yeah, things might stop? Sure, but the amount of changes we have made in garbage collection in from five to six to seven is amazing. So please don't, you know, uh, do not heed those kind of a statements, a generalized statement being made. There are some hiccups, raise it, and you know, we'll try to address that. And same, same with server-side stuff, you know, Glassfish right now is the fastest uh, app server free open source available. Why? It's because we want more and more people to use it as it and build something more on top of it. You know, take it and own it. I guess an excellent answer. We have time maybe for one more question from the floor. I have a gentleman in front. This is the last one. You're wearing a different hat today. <laughs> You know, on a Windows Mobile hat yesterday. It's open source today. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm glad Arthur isn't here to hear a comment about AWT. <laughs> uh, oh, the uh, JVM six supports a uh, scripting language like JavaScript. How would that facilitate web development? Um, so. Um, uh, Could you repeat the question? So okay. sorry. The, the question was that with the. Uh, uh, JDK 6, there is support for JavaScript out of the box. There's the Rhino um, engine is in there. Um, how does that uh, speed up uh, web development? So good question. So what, what we have been doing for some years, uh, and in some cases, in case of Ruby, we're taking a you know, really hard effort in this. Is We're trying to come in and say, OK, it is possible for people to take any framework in any language and be able to go in and interact and call Java APIs back and forth, right? And so it makes those kind of activities easier. So you're calling into Java, going back and forth from these things, calling amazing amount of Java APIs that you guys already are familiar with from within the rest of the language, whether it's Ruby or Groovy or, uh, you know, Jython, uh, you know, uh, including JavaScript. So that's the part that makes it easier. Um, the speedy, speed up part of it, you know, so don't know. You know, the question is more like your speed up stuff is based on the whole solution. So if you're within the GWT world, you know, that's what speeds up your development. So it's a framework story. Uh, what all the VM does for you is to make sure that you accept, access between the scripting language and Java is easy to do and natural. I think uh, with that, we can wrap up for this morning. I want to point out that Greg Murray here has been doing the demos. We'll be at the product showcase later today, and you can probably corner him if you have some questions about Jmaki. 
Uh, the next session starts in 15 minutes, Stephanie. Do you have any housekeeping things you need to, to cover? No, sessions are at 10.45. Right, thanks again to uh, Jeet Call from Sun Microsystems and, and Greg Murray, and we'll see you back in 15 minutes.